Hello folks, welcome back to The Slice. As you can see, I'm not in the normal Slice studios, I am on the road, but I'm about to break down why Federer lost to Juan Martin Del Potro in the quarterfinals of the US Open last night. I'm sure you watched it, and here is what happened. So, to jump to conclusions, Del Potro outplayed Federer. He played a better match as far as shot execution and just play, playing like his game was better, but he also beat him mentally and tactically, I think. So what I mean by that is Federer couldn't find his rhythm. So he couldn't find his rhythm in the game, and he's had a tough U.S. Open the entire time. We all kind of know that if you've been watching. He couldn't find his rhythm in this match. He was playing well, like okay, though. The match started off pretty equal, but De Potro's forehand, as we all know, is huge, and Federer... I think was put off by how big his forehand was last night because Del Potro was hitting the ball extremely well. At 5-6 in the first set, Federer was serving to stay in the set and put it to a tiebreaker. Del Potro hit like an on-the-run forehand 100 miles an hour that clipped the baseline, and I think it really rattled Federer. He went on to lose that. Uh, he got broken there and lost the first set. But I think from then on, he was afraid to, or he's at least overthinking going towards Del Potro's forehand. And uh, Darren Cahill, one of the commenters, commentator said that Federer's being a bit stubborn because he was going to the forehand so much. I think that's true. He was trying to, you know, he's like, I'm not going to get pushed around by this forehand. I'm going to go attack it, which is pr like, who are we to say that Federer's tactics are wrong in that situation? Because he's obviously worked out a lot in his career. But what I think he was doing was overthinking it when he went to the forehand. And because his rhythm was off, he couldn't find the execution. So when he was going to the forehand side of Depotri, he's overthinking it, maybe trying to put it too close to the line. I don't know. But then he was making a ton of unforced errors when he was going to that wing. Del Potro also served amazingly well. He got 67% of his first serves in. And when he did that, he won 81% of the points on his first serve, which is a really high number if you, if you don't really like, have a reference for those numbers. Federer didn't have an answer on the return game, and he couldn't deal with uh, Del Potro's serves. The ch and the chances that he did have to break, he broke him a few times, but in the big moments, Federer couldn't find what he needed to do. He made a lot of uncharacteristically bad errors at the net, especially. At the end of the day, Del Potro outplayed Federer. He played a better match and he deserves to go through. Fed fans shouldn't be quick to blame this loss on Federer's back. His, it was obviously that he was a little off all week, um, but that's just what happens in tennis and you have to play through and you have to win when you're a little off sometimes. And Federer couldn't do that last night. Del Potro brought his A game. He had the crowd behind him, which was crazy. If you watch that match, the Argentinian fans were like, ole, 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 Del Po, Del Po. They were going nuts. They were going absolutely nuts. It was a crazy atmosphere. So Del Po had momentum, and he took it to Federer. And you know what? When a guy who has the talent that Del Potro has, and he plays a game like he did, Federer's a little off. Del Potro's going to beat Federer. And that's what happened last night. And that is a slice on why Federer lost to Del Potro. Thanks for watching, folks. This is The Slice. This is where I do tennis reviews, commentary, and predictions. So keep it locked here. Subscribe down below, and your dreams will be fulfilled.